Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and right now we are in the middle of our own galaxy very very close to where the supermassive black hole is. Right now I've actually accelerated time so that every single second is equivalent to approximately one real year. And as you can see around the black hole there's a lot of star activity, a lot of stars kind of orbit this invisible space in the middle. And this is essentially how we found the black hole years ago. Now today we're going to be talking about a relatively recent discovery based on something that happened back in 2014 that allowed us to establish that our supermassive black hole also seems to have a little bit of atmosphere, a very thin atmosphere. So that's kind of cool. Let's talk about this. And let's begin by investigating how all of this was discovered. Back in 2010, the scientists studying the central region discovered that a very large chunk of a star, specifically just a dust bowl, was approaching the supermassive black hole really fast. They got really excited because if it fell into the black hole, it would allow them to study a lot of various ideas and theories that we had about black holes. It did this though. In 2014, it passed very close to the black hole and then kind of got shredded apart. So we got to see this, and this is today known as the G2 cloud. What you just saw is actually not a realistic representation. This is a simulation based on what we saw, just to make it a little bit more visible. Now, even today, this is still kind of what this would look like because the G2 cloud, as it's known, is slowly leaving the central region. Eventually, it will spread more and more. Some of the dust will probably fall into the black hole. And eventually, all of this will look kind of like this. This is maybe about 15 to 20 years from now. And so the scientists studying this region, specifically the G2 cloud, started to realize something. As they were observing the stars orbiting and as they were observing the actual dust cloud leaving the system, something was actually stopping the dust cloud from leaving at the initial speed. In other words, something was pulling on it, something was dragging it. There was something going on in there that was causing it to slow down. And so the scientist, whose paper you can find in the description below, realized that it's very likely that there is essentially a kind of an atmosphere-like conditions um, around the black hole. And they refer to this as accretion flow density. In other words, what's really most likely happening here is that around the actual black hole, because it eventually kind of sucks a lot of material in, there is a flow of uh, dust that's coming into the central region and it's creating this relatively thin but uh, observable level that you could almost describe as atmosphere. So imagine it's kind of like what you can see happening right here, but it's coming from every single direction and um, possibly not to this extent. So when they actually measure the level at a distance of about 140 AU astronomical units, which is equivalent to about um, approximately four times the distance of Neptune to the sun, or roughly about 22 billion kilometers, which is this distance here, they realized that this particular location contained approximately 4,000 particles per cubic centimeter. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, in the typical uh, space vacuum in between stars, you expect to find about one particle per centimeter cube. And whatever we have at this particular region around the black hole has about 4,000 times more. So it's 4,000 more pressure than um, vacuum. Although intergalactic vacuum, and that is the region between galaxies usually contains about a million times less material than galactic vacuum that you can usually find in the Milky Way. And uh, just to give you a more reasonable comparison, so the amount of atmospheric pressure that we can find right here where the ISS is orbiting is approximately 10 million particles per centimeter cube, which is approximately 2000 times more than the amount at 22 billion kilometers away from the supermassive black hole. In other words, it's not as much as you can find here because um, the drag that ISS gets from the atmosphere actually requires it to once in a while boost its orbit because it's technically slowly losing the orbit because of the atmospheric drag that it experiences here. But nevertheless though, at 22 billion kilometers away from the black hole, the drag is significant enough that we can notice the cloud slowing down. So in that sense, it is a pretty interesting and pretty incredible discovery. But the other mystery that the scientists are currently working on is, so what exactly is this and where did it come from? 
They believe that this is from a star that orbits in the vicinity, specifically one of these stars I showed you earlier, but they're not sure which one, and they're also not sure how exactly this blob um, sort of separated from the star. They think that it's because of the tidal effects of the black hole, so the star must have passed relatively close to the black hole for this blob to come off it. But at the same time, we haven't really studied the actual stars where this could have come from, so we don't really know what this G2 cloud even is. We do have speculations, but nothing theoretical yet. And so there's definitely a lot of questions to be answered here, and more specifically, a lot of things to discover around the supermassive black hole in the middle of our galaxy. But most importantly, because these scientists are currently calculating the actual deceleration effects of the G2 cloud, we can now um, actually predict and possibly establish the, well, I guess you can call it atmospheric pressure of various locations around the black hole. So in this case, uh, it's quite possible that if you were to come relatively close to the supermassive black hole, the um, drag would be much higher. And this means two things. One is that, well, at some point, the pressure in this area can become a serious problem for any object trying to orbit around the black hole. But at the same time, uh, this could also suggest to us that we could potentially uh, find ways to harvest all of this material by being relatively close to the black hole. So because of this discovery, there's going to be a lot of new things that we're going to find out about supermassive black holes in the next few years. I'm more excited to find out what sort of matter falls into the black hole, what potentially happens to it as it approaches the black hole, and if it somehow changes the astrophysical jets afterwards. But just the fact that we're able to discover what seems to be atmosphere around the black hole and the implications this might, might have with other observations is definitely really cool. Like, for example, um, this might mean that the M87 supermassive black hole, whose image we've taken recently, might have a tremendously thick atmosphere around it. Maybe even equivalent to something on the planet Earth? And if this pressure is high enough, does that mean that you can propel a craft around it and use aerodynamics to fly around a black hole? Well, maybe not, maybe that's going too far, but you never know. One day we'll hopefully discover what happens around these black holes, but for now that's really all we know. We know that there is something there that's slowing down the cloud, and we know that it's most likely the matter that's falling into it. On that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out the study I mentioned in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who wants to learn more about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.